Welcome back to the Dirt Head Shed. This week it's all about being in Moab, Utah for Easter Jeep Safari in my full size Ford. There's still a few guys hanging out from Full Size Invasion, so we're gonna go run the trails with them today. So, it should be fun. We're gonna go run uh, King Creek, which is a pretty fun trail that starts at a starts in like a creek bottom and winds its way out through the Tuleys quite a ways. And then uh, there's a pretty neat hill at the end called Hamburger Hill with a couple of really good obstacles. I got to kind of take it easy because I ended up drove. I ended up driving this rig uh, all the way out here from Washington. So we've got like thousand miles. I got to drive this thing home, and I can't break it while I'm here because I got to be. I got to make it home at some point, and I don't want to tow this thing. Cause that gets super expensive. And this dash is about to fall apart. I don't know if you can see that, but the stutter bumps are just shaking this thing apart. Ugh, poor old Ford. Let's see if I can get some suspension shots. This drive out to King Creek is pretty fun. Definitely a rough, a rough, medium paced trail. I came into that a little hot. Try the old camera upside down out the window. I'll have to flip it over when I edit it because I don't have my settings right on the camera right now. But if you guys ever dig around on YouTube, I did a video about a uh, Roxor, which is like a Indian Jeep, basically made by Mahindra. And uh, we came out here and I was testing this new suspension that we had done on it, and it was a blast. For being a little Jeep CJ7 type of thing, we were absolutely hauling butt through here. I mean, like, way too fast. So, you know, anyways, look that up. It's, uh, I think it was on Off-Road Power Products page and the vehicle is called Spud. Some decent sized rocks that we're banging over in second gear and high range. Pretty fun. Yeah, I dig it. I just love driving my stuff. First is some little obstacles. It looks like Bob's big Dodge is getting hung up a little bit. Caleb's got this rad square body Chevy that's all chopped up. And my friend Todd, this is Todd from Mercenary Bumpers and he's in a, I believe that's an 07 Ram 2500. I gotta apologize for having weak, weak camera angles, but filming and driving, I'm not gonna be able to get all the good stuff. I definitely have some tire rub going on in the rear when it articulates out. Let's see if we can get a shot of this Suburban coming through behind us. This thing's all chopped up and boat sided and it has a bunch of cool stuff on it. It's still on leaf springs, so it's relatively simple. All right. Cruising along, cruising along. Pretty fun. 
it would be it would be rad to come out here and have a camera crew and all that again and get real shots of the truck working but gonna have to deal with this for now old dave with his arm out the window all dangly old dangle arm all right i gotta shut up now so i don't create some new nickname that i don't want we're coming into first kind of obstacle on uh on the cane creek trail Time to lock the hubs. Hub time. Oh, that's not good. Ah, uh, he's just testing out his rear bumper. Go ahead and throw it in low range. See how the old truck will do. can't really see anything. I'll just fall off of this and hope that I'm on the right line. All right. First time getting to use four-wheel drive in Moab and Mom's spaghetti right here. Truck's never been here before. We've got a little bit of bumper scraping going on. I'm pretty sure I just wiped out that bumper that was already pretty wiped out before. All right, we'll get up here and check it out. Still not low enough in the gears. There we go. Gonna keep a little momentum or a little lower gear going on than I've got. Gosh, I knew I should have dang darn pulled that bumper back in before we left. Yeah, whatever. I think I peeled my bumper back a little more. The back one. The, the back one, not the front one. <laughs> there you have it. Caleb says the rear bumper looks great. Oh, Todd's up to Todd's up to something. Oh, all right. Let's go check out that bumper. Are you kidding? It put it back. No, seriously. No, I really thought it looked good. I was like, what do you mean? Holy crap. It was seriously like peeled back in this yeah. way before. Oh, I remember seeing it yesterday. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. We are doing a little trail repair on Todd's rig, that 07 Ram. He's got a suspension link bracket that is coming apart over here. It's been a problem. It's been a problem like multiple times, I guess. So Caleb's busting out the old Premier Power Welder out of the square body Chevy. And he's gonna buzz that thing back together. Yeah, we're getting it done. Heck yeah, you are. I've had multiple firefighters help me at my shop before. Yeah. Firefighters are the best at catching stuff on fire. Yeah, we're good. We, you have to be a little bit of a pyro, you I do. think. Oh, yeah. To be a fireman. If you don't love it a little bit, yeah. you're not a good fireman. That's true words yeah, right there. To eat, that too. Yeah. It's hard to keep it going sometimes when the rig is idling up and down. But once you get it moving, these things weld pretty well. I've got one of these in Mom's Spaghetti. They're, they're a game changer once you have one. What rad views. I mean, can you believe this? Ah, Moab is so cool. I can totally do without 
ledges in the lab. I'm not a big thrill seeker when it comes to heights and ledges, but like you kind of got to get out of your comfort zone a little bit sometimes if you want to come out and enjoy this because this is like I swear there's only a handful of places in the world that are like this it's pretty amazing all right let's follow Todd and the old mercenary dodge and I think this trail, I don't recall, I don't recall if this trail has like a bunch of really cool features on it. Um, I'm pretty sure we do this canyon, then we go up Hamburger Hill, which is like a pretty hard exit out. And then it winds around and we end up way north of town or way south of town. And uh, it's a long like 16 mile dirt road out. So it's a long trail. It's not super duper challenging, but you definitely want to have a winch and lockers and stuff if you're going to try and go up Hamburger Hill. You'll see that when we get there. One time I came out here and I was in a, uh, I was in a Jeep. It was a stretch JK with a diesel in it. And I actually like, I whacked a quarter panel or a fender on one of these rocks throughout this section. So hopefully we can make it through without whacking something on the board here. Cruising. We're cruising. I dig this little mini truck. These little sections coming up through here get pretty sketchy. There's like a little bit of a washout and it drops down into the canyon. And at the same time you have a rock on the left that's trying to push you into the canyon. So you just got to kind of take your time and work it slow and you get through it. I think there's another section up here that's a little bit worse. So the trick on this, this is like a wedge that a wedge rock thing that we got coming up and the trick on it is to typically drive over this big rock on the right. And you do that rather than, uh, oh, he's in it pretty hard there. We're gonna go ahead and just go low range, low range and drive over this thing if possible. Either that or we'll drive over on the left. I think I'm gonna go left right up to where the other cameraman is at. Dueling GoPros. Oh, I'm guessing. It's, it's in your bedside. Already? Yeah. Is it smashing it? It's kind of pulling it up. Okay. All right, I guess I'm going over the rock instead. One of the rules, typically you drive over the big rock on the trail instead of around it. Piece of cake. got into that bedside a little bit oh yeah just screwing it up a little bit there we go back to normal I'm gonna go back over here and see if I can catch some of the action on this ledge rock piece of cake Sure. 
Cherokees make everything easy. Watch this. Looking good. Looking good. Nice. Track. Ah, Cane Creek. I'm gonna find a spot over here and get some shots of these guys going by. Got to do it to get the shots. Pretty good looking group. Caleb in the Silverado. Todd over here in the 07 Ram 2500. This big old Suburban on like freaking 46s or something. It's obvious that Steven wasn't driving because I would have gotten wet. I expected more out of you, Riley. <laughs> this is where the tulies get pretty thick and it's a good idea to not have shiny paint. What a rad trail. This is one of those ones that I've done two times or three times, and every time I do it, I'm like, gosh, this is such a cool trail. Why don't we go out here more? Especially in a year that's early in the spring and you got a bunch of water in it, it's awesome. We're rolling up to the entrance to, I keep calling it Hamburger Hill. I assume that's the name of it. That's what I've always called it. There's some motorcycle riders down there and it looks like a Jeep, a Jeep up in front of us. So I'm sure we're gonna get up here and have a little bit of time to kill. Ah, so rad, look at this place. See all the little wind caves in the, uh, in the sandstone? All those little round pockets that's actually caused from the wind blowing through here. And I believe it's just because the sedimentary rock or the sand is a different consistency and it just blows out. It blows out over time before the other stuff does. It's absolutely amazing. Todd, what's one of the first w rules of four-wheeling? friends. Keep the guy behind you in sight. Yeah. You were going too fast. <laughs> it was my fault. <laughs> uh, this is, I remember this. It's legit. Todd and I are walking up. Oh, it's about to rain too. That's going to make it nice. <laughs> we're hiking up Hamburger Hill. There's a group of Jeeps up in front of us. This guy's winching. Looks like a fresh build, all new metal cloak stuff. This thing's nice. Super nice rig. What a clean LJ. They only made these from 04, 5, 6, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so long, long wheelbase TJ. These things are awesome. In typical fashion, right as I was coming up to the trail, I I broke my truck. Um, basically, these power steering lines or the ram assist lines had been rubbing on the bolt head for the steering ram for quite some time. 
and it decided to start squirting fluid everywhere as I was pulling up. So we pulled this thing off to the side and started tearing into it. Uh, also in typical dirt head fashion, I didn't turn my microphone on. Lame. All right, let's fix it. <laughs> we, were, we were just discussing our dilemma. Todd's up here on the ledge and he didn't quite make it, but we have one of our rigs at the top that's got a winch, Caleb's rig, but Caleb's down here working on my junk. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get it. Was it the rear hose or the front one that it's, was worse? The one the one right here at the top is worse, Dave, looks like. You yeah. can see the metal pieces and where it's got into it, but this one is still rubbing too, so I'm not, this one's maybe worse on the bottom. <laughs> They're both not good, yeah. but it's definitely... It's you want me to fire one. it up and we can make sure that we know which one's leaking? I think it's this one for sure, Dave. I can see the fluid coming out of it. Pretty okay. Good. It's the it's the bottom one. This is, All right. This is what happens when you go four-wheeling. <laughs> you work on your stuff. Well, sometimes you don't get to work on your stuff. Sometimes other people jump in and help yeah. you work on your stuff. Yeah, because they want to work on your stuff because <laughs> it's cool. This is what four-wheeling's all about. Yep. This is pretty Helping standard. each other out. Pretty... Pretty good. I really feel bad about not bringing my Baja bag with me. Ah, oh, you've got a fuel pump for me too. Good. For somebody, ish, maybe. That'll probably. I have that'll fit right on my truck. Pro probably. Yeah. <laughs> It'll hose clamp to anything. Yeah. So this is one of Watson's calls him Baja bags because when he's down in Mexico racing. You can pretty much fix anything out of these bags. So these are the fittings that we had on the line and the line has a hole in it right here. So basically these are field fix or field repairable hydraulic fittings. So we're going to cut a chunk of the Stevens leftover 20 year old line and we're going to build a new hose and hopefully it'll be good to go. It should be fine. Yeah. So the way these work. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Is this screws on left hand thread. thread yep and then this screws inside of it with a right hand thread and the hose essentially ends up in the middle this of it all. goes in and pinches it like that inside it's of there and creates a several thousand psi seal these things are pretty amazing if yeah, you uh if you're out wheeling and you get a chance to like build a hydraulic hose and use this yes you can go to the tractor store and build lines sometimes but these things are really cool because they're totally repairable. If nothing else, it's good to have for sprayers. Yeah. My Mazda, I put tractor supply lines on it just because I was like, I could go anywhere and get a three foot tractor hose, but. But not here. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go ahead and cut this over here. Okay. I am a lefty. Much better. So come on guys. <laughs> We're making making moves now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Watson man. Look at this guy. Freaking look like you've done this before, Steven. You, you don't even want to use a crescent wrench? Dude, he got it. It's a forearm before. <laughs> Jeez. Hanging with your buddies is really fun. I think that's it. Yep, you're that, there. It looks like it's there. I don't really know what I have at any given time. I'm just lucky that there was something in that aluminum box when we opened it. Oh, hold on a second. Let's uh, hold this too. Just to make sure you're not twisting it out. Yeah, I'm not sure it didn't push out. Caleb's coming over here to run this thing home. Trying to look at the I like the speed holes in the bumper, Dave. Thanks. Do they make noise at all? They do. <laughs> Whistle tips go whoop whoop. The wheels are turning the right directions. That's good. All right. I think that's a fix. That exhaust leak sounds so good. Yeah. So I'm Steven Watson, passenger, off-road design guy passenger in this because Tori wants to drive. But right now, Dave wants me to come up and run camera for him so that you can see mom's spaghetti 
conquering Dave hopes because otherwise Dave's not going to look real good. So this is where we're going. Caleb's pre-walking it yeah, for Dave. Caleb already drove it. So one of the things you can do when you're kind of walking up a course, you know, up to a road like this, is look at where you want to put your tires. So I would see these rocks and want to put my lefts here. And you can pay attention to where you put your lefts because you sit on the left. So that's what I would do. Now let's see what Dave does. It's kind of looking like he's got things in a really low gear, which is appropriate. That's why we do these things. Yeah, sure enough, he's actually coming a little farther over, putting tires on the far side of this stuff. You can watch things flex around. So something I didn't actually mention, I don't think, is that I own off-road design and we build the Magnum reduction box that's on the transfer case system in here. So it's the our reduction box and then a 205 transfer case behind it. And it uh, gives you basically an extra low gear. So you put the T-case in low and then you can put the reduction box in low and have another one. So it goes super slow and gives you this kind of control, which is what you're seeing out of the truck right now. And this is the big ledge. That actually was a slight challenge, not too big of a deal. We'll pick this stuff up and then we'll take it up for Dave. All right, I'm back to holding the camera. I have no idea what Watson was up to out there, but I'm back to driving. We're gonna go super low range and just see if we can crawl this ledge. Seems like it's going up. It's working. I really totally don't know where my line is at anymore, but we're getting up the hill. Awesome. Let's see if we can get some shots of the rear suspension working. Here comes Riley, just walking it. Nice. We got up past Hamburger Hill and you can see the motorcycle trail down there in the bottom. And there's a little bridge down there crossing over this canyon. It's a pretty rad spot. It's a little hairy right through here just because it's a shelf road. And uh, there's actually an old Jeep wreck down in the canyon. So that always makes you get a little weird about it. I gotta give a little shout out to Caleb Morrison for helping out with the uh, repair. Super good dude. If you uh, wanna see more wheeling and building action, go check out his YouTube channel. It's Caleb Morrison on YouTube. I think uh, he just uses his name for his channel, but he's got that rad uh, square body truck on 42s. He just did a bunch of work on it, getting it ready for Moab this year. So super good dude out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, firefighter. Go give him a follow. Coming down out of Hamburger Hill. And I think this is one of the last of the big obstacles. Bob's going up there in the big Dodge. God, it looks so cool. Full-size rigs are where it's at. Full-size rigs and weird mini trucks. There it is. Oh, hard on the dip. Oh, climbed up it. I 
think we're nearing the end of the trail. Um, there's like construction equipment over here in this spot. And if you look way up over on that hillside, you can see a Jeep that is uh, one that's perched up on the hill above Hole in the Rock, which is like a sort of a tourist trap, cool like house built into the rock years and years and years ago. So we gotta be getting close to town. There's erosion control and things like that going on. I guess we will uh, get back into town and find some dinner and stuff like that and figure out what's tomorrow. We got a whole week of this. It's gonna be rad. It's the next wheeling day in Moab and I'm cruising up to the Spanish Trail Arena to meet up with the Skyjacker crew. Uh, they're doing like a 50 year deal. It's their 50th anniversary this year. So they're kind of putting on a big deal this year. I'm gonna go meet up with them and a bunch of my friends and I think we're gonna start running Cane Creek again. I'm not sure if I can do the whole trail today, uh, mainly because I gotta be back in town at like 4.30 for this best stop kickoff party. So should be fun. We'll go, uh, we'll go see what's up and maybe run part of the trail, maybe run the whole thing. I picked up a straggler. Apparently Clifton and I have been planning to ride together on this trip, on this trail ride for like months and I forgot until Clifton was like, oh my God, where am I gonna put all my bags and stuff? Where do I sit? We're all good. We're like a mile behind. We're running tail gunner. We're on Cane Creek. It's official. Good. Tail has moved out of the parking lot. Yes, it's official. We're official. on Cane Creek. Yeah, for wheeling. I got a uh, Colt from okay. Colt builds it. Rolling that cool S10 in front of us. Vern in his fresh new Jeep Comanche build. That thing is awesome. And uh, basically, they just put all the oddball vehicles at the back of the pack, the guys that don't really fit in. So we are right where we need to be. It's hard getting video from the back of the pack. So you got to get creative. Oh, God. Smooth. This video is going to be just like my other video where I went on Cane Creek and I was in the back of the pack. Was that a good video? I haven't made it yet. Oh. I gotta go interview Vern about his truck. You guys saw this in my Mustang video. Vern, you got a second to talk about your rad truck? Yeah, this is my rad truck. This is the one that when I was driving my uh, when I was driving my uh, Mustang 2 down to Tucson, I stopped and helped him pull the bed off of this and we discussed like paint and body options. Yeah. He wanted me to make it nice and I said, no, I'll probably just paint it. Yeah. It's not nice. It's nice enough. It's got green paint on it. Yeah. What did you do to it? It's got lockers. Yeah, so I kind of uh, had a bunch of parts laying around and put them together in this thing. I had a, it's okay. got a Dana 44 in the back and uh, I had an ARB for a 44. So I put an ARB and a, a 410 gear set in the and Dana these are 44. Leftover wheels and tires off your old Explorer project. Yep. And so, uh, and then I had a Detroit for a Dana 30. So all I had to really buy was the uh, high, uh, high pinion ring and pinion set for the front. This thing is red. My first, my first wheeling rig was a Comanche, yeah. and it was a blast. It's my latest wheeling rig. Yeah, I love Comanches a lot. They're so good. I've only owned like eight of them. What's and crazy I'm, is everybody also, for the airlocker. I bought a Vier and I made a little manifold. Yeah, <laughs> and hooked that up like I, two I, nights ago. And you yeah. high outputted it. No, it's a 91, so it's a high output. Oh, this thing's right. rad. Mine was an 88. I'm super jealous. This is a 91. Mine was an 88, so it had the Renix ignition and mm -hmm. it had a Peugeot. Yep. And it had a Peugeot oh, yeah. garbage trans. Yeah. And then, and then when you have the uh, the pressurized oh, yeah, tank. The pressurized tank. Yeah. 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 I had tank. I had all those. When I sold mine, I actually drove it from San Diego to Yuma to sell it, uh -huh. and uh, blew up the pressurized tank and overheated it. As I I took like 400 bucks off when I sold it to the <laughs> right. guy. Uh, well. <laughs> This is a good rig. It's sort of an underdog on the trail, but I guarantee you he's going to get it done. All right. I think the rest of the guys are wearing down. We're it's not an out. underdog in life. No. <laughs> Vern made it through this thing in his little green truck. Let's see how Colt does in blue Chevy. I went down it yesterday and just like reefed on the rear bumper. 
I'm gonna go this way and see if I can not rip the bumper off. Please don't rip the bumper off. Uh, 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 not anywhere near. Oh, there it is. Uh, so bad. All right, I, my group went on. I turned around and I'm gonna head back into town. It's about noon right now. So I don't think these guys are gonna be off the trail in time for me to get to that desktop party. So I'm on my own. We gotta get out of here, do it safe. I'll let the front tire climb. Oh, that's not too bad. Hit the rock slider. Nice and steady. You don't want to end up down there. All right. Whew. I think those were the worst of the, the like sketchy ledges on this section of trail. All right, we're cruising back out the trail. I think we got past all the big groups. There's a two-door JK that's like super slammed on big axles and tires that's running out with me. And then uh, we've got this Cherokee or a Grand Wagoneer or Wagoneer or whatever that was part of our group with uh, Skyjacker, but he punched a or punched a hole in his oil pan or got a crack. So we are. Uh, it looks like we're. This is our little ragtag group that's heading back to town. This JK is just awesome. It is super low. Looks like triangulated four link and coilovers. It might be a genrite cage on it i think that's a genrite cage uh like their competition one that thing's definitely like ultra four inspired it's really cool looks like it's got a super duty super duty axles under it it's really cool all the way out here from new york it looks like We're getting close to being out of here. A couple more minutes and we'll be back into town. This is such a rad canyon. If you guys are in Moab and you don't even have a, don't even have four wheel drive, like you can still drive out the end of Cane Creek Road and be on the dirt and see all of this scenery. It's pretty amazing. I'm heading up to Sand Flats Recreation Area. That's like the Slick Rock campground and all that stuff so heading up there so that I can meet up with Fred and uh, I think he's out doing like interviews or something so I'm gonna go see if I can track him down and then we're going into town after that to go to this is a huge hill um, my little Mazda did not like going up and down this hill Fred's little flat fender even worse oh my gosh that thing was a dog Anyways, I'm gonna go track down Fred and then we're gonna head to the uh, best top party later This on. is pretty cool. My homies from Washington showed up. That's Dave Krieger, STM. Over there, we got Luke from Hazard Fab. And then Tom Ingram over here from Spokane Water Knife. They're all getting ready to get ready and go do rad stuff. Have fun, dude. I think I'm hot on his trail. They dropped a pin a while back and it seems like he should be out here shooting like an interview or something. I know he's doing a bunch of work for Best Top. Apparently he's just kind of out here doing a little photo shoot. We'll see if we can find him. I see some like little tire tracks which kind of make me think they're in the flat fender with some like old school traction tires. That'll be neat. Oh. Have you seen the LaSalle's? LaSalle's, they're right back here. <laughs> they're right in your face. <laughs> right there. Let me tell you something about the the LaSalle's. Well, yeah. <laughs> they are right there. Smacking you right in the face. I mean, you can't miss them. You better have a helmet in this truck because they're about to smack you in the face. Buddy. It's beautiful. You got a golden ticket or steering wheel. I do. I love it. He's got a golden steering wheel. We are now turned around and headed back into town. Fred was out here filming an intro for this uh, series of videos he's doing for Best Top. 
and you can see the little flat fender that he's in. That's a 54 CJ3B, and uh, he uh, they're doing a giveaway on that Jeep in honor of the uh, 70th anniversary of Best Top. So keep following along on Fred's uh, on Fred's YouTube channel and then on Best Top's website, and you should be able to you should be able to enter for a chance to win that thing, which is pretty rad. It's a cool looking little Jeep. Man, it really just soaks those bumps up. Look at it, just soak up the whoops. Soaking up the W's over here. Now he's going around the W's. He's trying to find a smoother route. <laughs> That's awesome. The old noob sock though, that thing is smooth. That thing makes my truck feel like a, like a lumber wagon. I am at the best top party and it's going pretty good. It's actually kind of wrapping up. It's like 7.30, so I'm gonna probably run back to the hotel and start editing some videos so we can get this one out there. Thanks for watching the Dirt Head Shed. We'll see you next time.